In 2023, developers are still wondering if they should build an app or a website. And they, they kind of pit them against each other to try and choose. But we at Expo believe that there is a different way to think about front end development. In the last decade, mobile computing has gone from nearly non existent to the majority of the way that uh, we uh, consume the internet. With an almost 10% or sorry, an almost 10x increase uh, surpassing desktop worldwide. And on mobile, native apps make up uh, over 90% of the time spent uh, when, when you're on a device. The other 10% is uh, in, in mobile web. And as a result, we've actually seen a widespread trend emerge in mobile sites. Mobile websites have become deeply entangled with their native app counterparts. Now, we refer to these types of websites as mobile gateway sites, and a lot of popular websites are building these on mobile web. They do this because mobile web enables four fundamental features. The first is being an instantly available preview of the app's content. Anyone can open any web page at any time and preview the app's content. And this is great for users who don't have the app yet. The second is universal links. Now, universal links uh, work by creating a website and a native app and then painstakingly linking them together. At Expo, we refer to apps that are built on universal links as universal apps. Now, when a universally linked native app is installed on a user's device and they open the link to the connected website, uh, the OS skips over the mobile website, takes you right into the application. This system enables users uh, to access content inside of your app with a standard URL, meaning you can share content uh, anywhere with just a URL. It could be on Twitter, emails, Reddit, SMS, anywhere you want to promote your content. It could even be in a TV commercial with like a URL bouncing around the screen, like the Super Bowl ad and the, that Coinbase put out. It's just a link. Uh, so it's native content everywhere. And the third feature is installation. Users can install your app right from the browser without having to travel to the App Store. This is really fundamental because it also means that when they you know, install the app and they open it from this page, they can be sent to this exact same page in the app without losing any progress. And finally, possibly the most important and powerful feature of a universal app is the ability to add SEO to your native app by corresponding it to a searchable website. We call this universal SEO. This makes the content inside of your native app discoverable by anyone with a search engine, which is substantially better than being buried in the App Store. These four features are wildly important. They shift the narrative from web verse native to web and native. Uh, as the mobile web is kind of clearly designed to empower this really, really powerful native experience. But just universal links on their own are extremely difficult to set up. They're even harder to scale, and they're almost impossible to test. When companies do implement universal links, it's usually just for a couple of key routes, and those few supported routes will also uh, fail to use vital data, like query parameters. They'll often scrub them out. So then you, know, you lose important context, and it kind of leads to a frustrating user experience. But even basic discoverability is extremely important, especially to the people who need it most and can access it the least, which are independent developers, indie devs. Uh, you know, just imagine what the world would be like today if only the biggest companies and groups uh, had access to SEO on the web. Wouldn't be great. Uh, and this is how most of the native world operates today. That same native world that has kind of been dominating uh, web usage for uh, you know, a couple of years now. So it needs to be better. Now, what if universal links were actually the default and not some complex feature you add later? Uh, what if the way that you set them up was the easiest possible way to build mobile navigation? 
And what if instead of you know, sanitizing URLs, we just handle them exactly, we pass them to React state? What if when you wrote a React component, it was highly performant and the content inside of it was fully discoverable by anyone? Because it doesn't really matter which tool or framework you use to actually write text to the screen if no one can find that text in that screen somewhere. Which is why if there were a system which offered automatic universal links and automatic universal SEO, it would be one of the most powerful ways to build mobile uh, content, mobile apps. And it's exactly what we plan to deliver with the new Expo router. <laughs> Last year, we introduced Expo router which is a first of its kind, revolutionary new file-based routing system, specifically crafted for universal app development. And today, I'm gonna to be showing everyone here all of the new features that are coming to V2. But first, let's take a quick look at how Expo Router works today. By simply creating files in the app directory, you create robust navigation pages inside of your application. Uh, for both your app and website. The name of the file is its universally accessible link, automatic deep links on every single page. You can organize files into folders and create a layout route, which adds uh, shared UI elements like stack bars and tab bars, drawers, what have you. And because it's built on React Navigation, you have access to all the same powerful features like shared element transitions, the new reanimated, or uh, native stack navigators. Now, Expo Router supports modern conventions from the web like dynamic routes. It also supports catch-alls and groups and a you know, number of other things that you kind of find in the web. But it also introduces some new concepts that are very app-specific, like shared routes, where you want to present the same screen with the same URL in multiple different places at the same time. It's kind of something that was added to make up for the fact that there's no tabs in, in native apps. Now, this is going to be a good one. Expo Router doesn't just help with navigation. It's also really good for TypeScript. Expo CLI already has pretty awesome TypeScript support, but starting now, uh, if at any point during the or you add TypeScript code, Expo CLI will automatically install all the TypeScript dependencies that you need. It will set up the TS config, and it will also augment the React Native types so that they support web. And to support Expo Router even further, we've added uh, TypeScript import aliases to the Metro Bundler through Expo CLI. So now in your TS config, you can go in, add paths, set them up whatever you need, and all of your spaghetti imports that you may use to reach outside of this app directory and import things like components or API-related uh, uh, modules, all of those go from this to something like this, uh, which is you know, a very common pattern found in the web. 
everything here uh, works and integrates directly with VS Code. So it means you get jump to text, you get the previews, you get the auto imports. It's the shortest import, so it's the one that's always recommended. It's pretty nice as well. And that's the new TypeScript support and Expo Router. But possibly the most important feature of Expo Router is the state-of-the-art deep linking engine. Instead of pushing screens from arbitrary IDs, we introduced the concept of links, uh, where you can move around using uh, URLs. Now, every route is publicly accessible uh, with any of these deep links, and it also supports query parameters. It's how you pass around data, all serializable. This system can be extended to support universal links with like unprecedented ease. It's extremely simple to set up. All you have to do is turn the feature on, and then the universal links completely work. And now this gets us to being able to install the app directly from the browser and passing links around to people and having them just open up content into your app. But it doesn't get us universal SEO. It doesn't make our app searchable. Having a solid web platform optimized for mobile and SEO is the crucial missing piece here. It's, it's fundamentally what we need. Now, this was the motivating reason behind introducing uh, Expo Web four years ago at the first AppJS conference. And uh, the original Expo Web, while powerful enough to build websites like the Blue Sky website by a single dev, uh, has become a little outdated. So the way we built it originally was we, we just took what was running on native, which is a giant JavaScript bundle, and ran it on web. And this is not very optimal for web. Uh, this is a system called a single page application. This can't be indexed by browsers very well because there's very little HTML. There's just kind of one div element, and then the JavaScript adds the rest of the HTML after it loads. So nothing to index. The main reason we went for this approach is that native apps have a single entry point, you know, the app.js. And uh, <laughs> Because of this, we don't really know which, uh, which files can be um, pulled out or turned into other pages to create multiple pages. Uh, we needed a file-based router. So since we didn't have one, we halted support on web and development uh, until we could get one. And thanks to Expo Router, we can now move beyond single-page applications. for the suspense, <clears throat> which is why I am thrilled to announce that today, static routes uh, in Expo will now be a thing. Uh, you'll be able to export your routes as crawlable HTML uh, that search engines, LLMs can recommend content, and it can link directly into your app. Uh, so static rendering in Expo. Static routes work in five steps. First, you configure the project to use Metro for web and the new static output mode and then you run the universal mpx expo export command. Using the new plus HTML file, you can wrap all of your children with uh, the HTML element. You have full control over it. It's good for things like Google Analytics or adding global styles. Then all the layout routes are sequentially rendered inside of each other up to the leaf route. We have a new generate static params function, which is like the Next.js get static paths and uh, similar functions on web. This basically means if you have like a dynamic segment, uh, you can export a bunch of different variable content. This is good for things like blogs or uh, conference apps uh, where you, you want to render out each user. And finally, the static HTML is written to disk and ready for uploading to any hosting service. And that's the new static routes feature in Expo Router v2. It's designed to work with native apps to enable searching according to Apple and Google's best practices for app indexing. It's a very niche and unique web framework. Uh, Expo SDK 49 will be the first version of Expo to support static site generation. And this effectively means that when you use Expo on web and on native, you now have this clear path to universal SEO for everything in your app, not just a few key features, literally everything, uh, which has never been possible before. 
So we're very excited about it. Now, there are a number of factors that search engines consider when indexing content. Static routes provide the most important part. The expert router link component actually magically turns into anchor elements when you run it on web, so they can crawl and find all the other pages. But what about you know, the title and the icon and the favicon and all that? Uh, well, for that, we created the new Expo head module, which is powered by universal links. Uh, this Expo head module generates metadata per route for both web and, uh, and also native. And we'll get into that here in a second. So to use this, you simply import the head component in any of your routes, and then you use it just like you would any other head component in like a web framework. If anyone's familiar with web development, this looks super familiar. All the content you define here will show up in search results as you'd imagine. But our head element goes even further than the web. When Expo Head is used with universal links, it brings native Safari features to any iOS app. I'll show you what that means. So for example, you can look at any page inside of your Expo router application when using the new head element, and you can say like, hey Siri, uh, remind me of this later. And it will intelligently create a new reminder because it knows what this is because there's a URL registered at any time. Uh, so users can effectively save state and then rehydrate that state later automatic accessibility. Then we've also introduced some new metadata properties, the Expo handoff property, which enables Apple handoff automatically for all of your screens. With this, your users can instantly transition from mobile to web to desktop to iPad to any of your devices while preserving state. When using your native app, a handoff button uh, will show up in the dock saying, you know, continue in Google Chrome. You'll click that button, and it will open up to the exact same URL, same query parameters, everything, automatically continuing you. You can make some modifications, do whatever you want, and then in the task switcher, can automatically switch back, preserving all that same state. Again, the setup requirement for this is uh, nothing. You just build the app around the concept of URLs, and things like this are just possible. Uh, this is amazing for cases where you want to discover content on desktop, pass it over. But it also, because it has these query parameters in there, and those query parameters represent React state, it means we can do some really magical things where, you know, maybe you discover some content on web, greatest content in the world for discovery, and then uh, you, maybe you add some things to a cart or you make some modifications, scroll somewhere, then you want to hand off to your phone uh, where you maybe you make a purchase and you add notifications. You effectively have these flows now where by simply writing an app once, you can utilize the best of all of these platforms end to end, um, which is pretty exciting. So that's the new Expo head API. This module will come standard in Expo Router v2, uh, and it will be available in Expo Dev Clients and Static Routes. And of course, you can use it in any React Native app, just like all the other Expo features. So let's really quickly talk about bundling, specifically in Metro. As many of you know, uh, React Native is used at Facebook to build the Facebook app. And the Facebook app is very, very large. So standard, standard bundling solutions just, they don't really cut it in terms of speed and productivity. And this is all because, this is because all of the dependencies are always mapped uh, and bundled with each request and sent to the output bundle. Because historically, Metro has not supported the async import syntax. So to solve this, in, in uh, 2019, Meta developed the lazy and deferred bundling, which means that only the parts of the Facebook app that they were actually working on would be bundled. Everything else would be deferred until request time, uh, which means drastically reducing startup times in development, especially when you work across teams. Now, we teamed up with the React Developer Experience team at Meta to integrate this system directly into Expo Router, offering users these same performance benefits right out of the box for the first time ever. And we call it Async Routes. So with Async Routes, every screen 
is automatically deferred until you request it. Uh, you know, and then it's lazily loaded with suspense. You get this bundle indicator as it's bundling. It shows up, it's cached, so you can come back and test the instant transition. And this leads to much faster startup time and development. Because no matter how big your app is, you're now only bundling one page at a time. So it's effectively bundled at the same speed as an app with one page. Async Routes also enables much better upgrades because broken pages won't take down the entire app. You'll notice here I've got four tabs. The app only errors out when I open up the fourth tab. So if you have an app and you're doing some sort of upgrade, uh, you no longer have to fix every single screen all at once in order to use it. You can incrementally adopt and improve your app. Again, great for working across teams. This builds on our continuous native generation offering of config plugins and pre-building to just further improve the upgrading experience, which is already pretty sweet uh, because we love upgrading. And uh, well, actually, we don't love upgrading. We just want it to be automatic. So in a, a medium-sized app, kind of a moderate couple screens, we've noticed uh, three times faster startup speed when bundling that first screen because, I mean, it's not actually faster bundling. It's just split up and chunked around. Uh, and of course, it improves over time as your app gets larger. So that's the new async routes feature, uh, which will be experimentally available in Expo Router v2 and Expo SDK 49. Uh, and you can turn it on using the Expo Router config plugin. And we, again, really want to thank Modi Zilberman and his uh, team, the React Developer Experience team at Meta, for uh, their amazing contributions to this feature. Uh, we're super excited to bring it to people. But settle down. Uh, on the topic of bundling, we believe that a full universal stack is the future to unlocking some really imag like magical workflows, like a lot of the features that I just showed you that feel truly native that we just get for free. And we'll continue to build out functionality like React server components on top of Metro in these few coming releases. Uh, but as a result, we've begun sunsetting Webpack support in Expo. We've used Webpack for web only, and this has really limited our ability to share features across platform. Everything that we built into Expo Web was specific to Expo Web. Now everything we build on Expo Web automatically shared on native. Webpack support has been moved to maintenance mode, so it will continue to stay usable, uh, just like how the rest of the community has been using it. Um, but all new features, like again, server components, uh, Expo Router, these will all be Metro only going forward. Now when you switch to Metro Web, you get Expo Router, you get Fast Refresh, you get error overlays, you get unified logging, you get stack traces, unified exporting, and uh, you, you also get one other thing. Now, according to the React Native survey, the most missed feature in the React Native ecosystem is CSS and styling. And now that we have static rendering in Expo Router, this means that we also introduced a layout shift in Expo Router. So we need to solve for that, because um, it's not good. So this made styling a very clear priority for us which is why I'm excited to announce that we will have first-class support for CSS in Expo Web and uh, possibly native. CSS in Expo with Metro means you have SAS, SCSS, CSS modules. All of these work in a pipeline that compiles down to CSS. And then it's all statically extracted so that it can load inside of your binary without the need for JavaScript. You could make whole apps that don't even use JavaScript on web. CSS and Expo can also be customized using post-CSS plugins uh, and files that can be you know, imported from node modules. And then it all supports uh, hot reloading. And on native, currently, the system basically just mocks it out. So no more having to wrap your imports in like styles.web and styles.native. Uh, that's basically all behind the scenes now. It's all powered in Rust, thanks to Lightning CSS. As a result, um, it's ridiculously fast. Minifying and parsing CSS is both uh, four times faster than ES build, and it's uh, roughly 130 times faster than JS tools like CSS Nano. So it's pretty fast. And 
in the future, we can leverage this new CSS pipeline in Metro to add native support for very scoped CSS features like Tailwind or CSS modules uh, as well, which will radically simplify the approach of web developers coming over to native, uh, which we just think is really important. We feel that React Native should feel like React on native and also native with React. Um, and we know CSS is possible. We've got examples and demos, but we won't be releasing until sometime after uh, SDK 49. Uh, here's a quick demo uh, of just using CSS modules in Expo Web. Uh, you see it here on native and web. We just parse the results, and then we can pull it in. Uh, we also have access to different CSS units, things that work much better on web uh, or more dynamic. And then the way we'd import it is just as a module, and we treat it like it's more styles, just like if we define it with stylesheet.create. Uh, so it's a solid alternative. And we, um, we think that the way people will use this is not directly. They'll mostly, it'll mostly be utilized by libraries like Tailwind and Tamagui as this underlying bundler primitive, uh, which they can compile down to. So effectively, what this means for you as users is that the results are substantially faster, far more real, and at no point do you have to feel like you need to switch around your tooling in order to uh, achieve really performance styling. It's just built right in. Uh, so we're really excited for the value that this is gonna add. And first class styling will be coming in June with SDK 49, available in any React Native project uh, by installing Expo and using Expo CLI. And that is the new Expo Router V2 lineup. Styles, bundling, faster bundling, better at scale, um, TypeScript everywhere, static routes, searchability. Um, we are extremely, extremely excited to release this. Uh, we just believe that a high-performing, shareable native experience is important to the future of the web. And we believe that everyone should be able to build it regardless of team size, which is why we are just, I mean, yeah, we've been working on this for a while and we're, we're really excited. The new features will begin rolling out and releasing Expo SDK 49. And uh, if you're as excited about the future of mobile computing as we are, then I highly recommend you reach out to us on Twitter at Expo or come find us at the show. Um, if you wanna join the team, we would, uh, we'd love to talk. And you can find me on Twitter at Bacon Bricks. I'll be tweeting out links to everything, so you don't have to take my word for it. You can, you can just try uh, all the new features in the alpha. And um, yeah, thanks.